Spring has come early to the Canadian real estate market. Sales are through the roof, prices are on the rise, inventory is critical low, and bidding wars are happening absolutely everywhere. The Bank of Canada is now saying we might be seeing the early signs of the Canadian real estate market starting to overheat and interest rates are on the rise. Will that be enough to slow down this run that the Canadian housing market has been on for the past year? Let's chat about that and more on this, your March 2021 Canadian real estate market update. Hey, welcome back to another episode of All Prairie Real Estate, where I educate you about Canadian real estate. If you're new here, my name is Matthew Fife. from real estate agent from Regina, Saskatchewan. I do these monthly market updates and weekly educational videos about anything to do with buying or selling a house in Canada. We're going to do for this market update, like we always do, covering 11 major markets in the Canadian real estate market. I break down each individual city. We talk about new listings, sales numbers, prices, inventory levels, insight from local realtors, and each city I give a Ball Prairie Real Estate Biometer score so you know what's going on in your housing market. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with my ranking for your city. If you wanna skip all of my babble and my talk, right below I've got each city segmented out so you can just jump to the city you wanna know more about. If you can do that, give me a like while you're at it. Now, the Bank of Canada has started to say, well, maybe we're seeing some signs that Canadian real estate market overheating. I think they're about eight months late to the party on that one. This market has been hot for eight or nine months in a row now. If you think the Canadian real estate market's starting to overheat, let me know in the comments below if you think it's overheating and why. Even the CMHC CEO did a public apology, basically saying that they got their March, or sorry, May 2020 prediction for the Canadian real estate market to see an 18% decline in house prices over the next year. They finally admitted they got that one wrong. I think they're also a little late to the party on that one as well, seeing as even by fall of last year, it was very obvious that that prediction was going to be nowhere close to accurate, but they still clung to that prediction that prices were coming down. I'm going to do an update video in May talking about how CMHC got that prediction so wrong. So look forward to that one. They also haven't made a prediction this year yet, which is rather interesting. We talked about it in the intro. Interest rates are starting to trend up. Is that going to slow down the Canadian housing market and slow down this crazy price appreciation that we're seeing right now? I'm going to talk about that later in the video, so stick around for that. If you saw my poll that I put up earlier in the week, I asked you which city have seen the largest year-over-year -year increases for the number of homes sold in the month. If you guessed Vancouver, you were correct. They had a 75% increase year-over-year -year in sales. It's absolutely crazy what's going on across Canada, and Vancouver was on the top of the pile. But as always, we get to start this off with another terrible joke. What do you call a dead magician? An abracadaver. If you have another terrible joke that I can use in a future video, put in the comments below for me. If it wasn't for a stretch of minus 40 that cooled things off a little bit, we would have sold even more houses in Regina in the month. Even with all that, 239 homes were sold in a month. That's up 55% from last year. The five-year average is 160 homes to be sold in the month listings 373 new listings came on the market that's up about six percent from last year the average 355 so we're just slightly above the average i talked about the last couple of updates this is when we should start seeing the number of homes for sales so the inventory level start to increase and we did finally in the city of regina there were 784 homes available for sale on march 1st that is up Four. Yes, there were four more homes for sale in March 1st than there were on February 1st. We should see normally about 1,200 houses for sale this time of year. That very active buyer's market combined with low inventory is pushing up prices. The benchmark price in Regina is now $271,000. That is up about 7% from 
from last year and we're seeing a very active market across the board. 75% of all the deals I've been involved in so far this year have been in competitive multiple offer situations and I don't see that easing up anytime soon. The spring market's here, the weather's warmed up, the buyers are gonna be out in force even more. So if you're thinking about selling your house, put it on the market and hit this spring market because I think it's going to be crazy and that's why I've got the Bald Prairie Real Estate Biometer. You're thinking about buying a house this year, I'd be getting moving right now and get on it before it gets even more competitive. So what's going on in the Victoria real estate market? Once again, it's a strong demand, low inventory situation. 863 homes were sold in the month. That is up 53% from last year, and it's up 34% from the month before. There's just over a thousand houses that were put on the market last month. That's down 1% from last year. It's up about 11% versus their five year average. Active listings, just over 1300 active listings. That is down 41.5% from last year. It is also down about a third of a percent from last month. Their months of inventory is at 1.5. That puts them squarely in a seller's market and they've been that way for quite a while now. The composite benchmark price for Victoria was just under $760,000. That's up 7.5% from last year. It's also up 2% just from the month before. Looking at the monthly price trend, you can see that prices generally accelerate through the spring into the summer and then flatten off in the back half of the year. The yearly price trend, that's where you see that upward momentum that's continuing for a number of years. So what does the Bulb Prairie Real Estate Biometer say for Victoria? Well, strong demand, low inventory, you know what's happening, prices are going up. So if you're thinking about buying a house this year, it's time to get moving. Two months in a row now, the Vancouver real estate market has absolutely smashed their 10 year sales record. And it's not just single family homes anymore. Condos are also seeing a rebound, not only in sales, but also in prices. There was 3,727 houses were sold. That's up 73% from last year. It's up 35% from last month. Their five year average is just under 2,600 houses sold in the month of February. How about new listings? 5,048 new listings went up for sale. That is up 26% from last year. It's up 11% from the month before. Their five year average is about 4,400. So listings went up, but sales easily outpaced the new listings. What did that do to active listings? Well, there's 8,350 active listings. That is down 13% from last year. It is up 0.5% from the month before. The five year average though for active listings, just over 9,100. So where does that put their months of inventory? They're at 2.2, again, squarely in the seller's market territory. Of course, that is pushing up prices as well in Vancouver. The benchmark price of the Vancouver real estate market, that's the composite benchmark price, $1,084,000. That is up 6.8% from last year. It's up 26 from last month. Talking with agents in Vancouver, they talked about the affordable price points. Those are what's selling the best. I know Vancouver, affordable, don't really go hand in hand, but that's what's going on. Anything in those lower price points is selling exceptionally fast right now. So what does this say about the Vancouver real estate market for the Bald Prairie real estate biometer? It's time to get moving if you're thinking about buying a house this year. Which single month saw the most homes sold in Calgary in the last five years? If you said February 2021, you'd be awfully close. It was actually in June 2018, but February 2021 was really close. They had 1,816 houses sold in a month. That's up 53% year over year. It's also up about 52% from last month. Their five year average from month of February, there's only 1,100 houses sold, so they absolutely smashed that five-year average. New listings, 2,848. That is up 13% from last year. It's up 26% from the month before. The average is about 2,300 new listings in the month. There are currently 4,500 active listings in Calgary. That is down 22% from last year. It's also up about 12% from the month before. The five year average is over 6,200 active listings this time of year. Their months of inventory, 
2.5. That puts Calgary in a seller's market right now. Their benchmark price, composite benchmark price for Calgary, $431,000. That's up 5.6% from last year. It is up 1.7% from the month before. Looking at the monthly price trend, you can see that Calgary is now seeing their current benchmark price crossing over their five-year average benchmark price. That recovery continues on in Calgary. Looking at the yearly price trend, you can see Calgary continues that recovery. They're slowly gaining from all the losses they've had over the last number of years. It's a nice positive sign to see that market starting to recover. Now, with the weather warming up, I would expect this to continue. So what does the Bald Prairie Real Estate Biometer say about the Calgary real estate market? Well, if you think about buying this year, it's time to get moving. A great friend of mine, an even better realtor, told me that the Edmonton real estate market tends to trail the Calgary real estate market. So when you see Calgary taken up, Edmonton is soon to follow, and that has started to happen. They had over 1,600 houses sold in the month. That is up 51% from last year. It's also up 36% from the month before. The five-year average number of homes sold in the month, just over 1,000. The active, sorry, new listings, 2,600 new listings got put on the market. That is up 6% from last year. It's up 10% from last month. Their five-year average is about 2,600. So they're right on pace with that five-year average for new listings coming on the market. Active listings, 5,654 active listings to start the month. That is down 22% from last year. It's up 7% versus last month. The five-year average active listings is 8,000 for the month. And the months of inventory in Edmonton is at 3.5. So they're just barely in that balanced territory. They're trending towards the seller's market right now. The composite benchmark price for Edmonton is $322,000. That is up 3% from last year and up about a half a point from the month before. Now, Edmonton does take a couple of weeks to produce this benchmark price. So I've done a rough calculation on it. When I get the final number, I will make some adjustments to the chart for Edmonton. Looking at the monthly price trend, this is generally when we start to see price in Edmonton start to increase through to the summer before they see a little bit of a retreat in the winter months typically. And looking at the yearly price trend, you can see this upward swing that we're starting to hit here should continue on to the midpoint of the year. With market forces at play they've got, we've got strong demand and low inventory. I'm expecting that prices are going to continue to increase for the next couple of months in Edmonton. So everything about buying a house in this year, the Balbury Real Estate Biometer for the Edmonton real estate market says you should get moving. Did Saskatoon not get that same blast of minus 40 like Regina did for an entire week? Because their sales numbers tell me it's the middle of May. 352 houses were sold in the month. That's up 53% from last year. It's up 24% from the month before. The five-year average was usually 220 sales in the month. So big month for Saskatoon. How about new listings? 542 new listings hit the market. That's up 16% from last year. It's down 3% from the month before. Their five-year average is just over 500 houses listed in the month. Inventory, they're currently at just under 1,100 houses on the market. That is down 26% from last year. It's up 6% from the month before. The average for the five year is over 1,600 houses for sale in Saskatoon. So they're very low in inventory compared to their five year average. That's pushed their months of inventory down to 3.1. They're just a hair into the balanced market category, but they're definitely trending into a seller's market in Saskatoon. Benchmark price is up 9% year over year. It's $308,000 now. That's also up 2.7% from last month. If you look at the monthly price trend, you can see that this is when we start to see prices in Saskatoon increase all through the spring and into the summer. And then looking at the yearly price trend, you can see the recovery continues in Saskatoon. Talking with local agents there, anything priced between $250,000 and $400,000 continues to see multiple offers and sell very quickly. The luxury and acreage market has seen an uptick in activity and condos, which have been squarely in the buyer's market category for years, is trending now into the balance category. So what does the Ball Prairie Real Estate Biometer say for the Saskatoon real estate market? Well, if you're thinking about buying a house this year, it's time to get moving. 
In the Winnipeg real estate market, they had over a thousand houses sell in the month. That is up 48% from last year, and it's up 9% from the month before. They had over 1,600 new listings come on the market. That is down 5% from last year though, but it is up 3.8% from the month before. They have 2,500 active listings right now. That's down 41% from last year. It is also, uh, sorry, it is up 3.7% from last month. Their months of inventory is at 2.4. That means Winnipeg is in a seller's market right now. Their benchmark price is $298,000. That is up 10% from last year. It's up 1.7% from last month. Now I've done a rough calculation on this benchmark price because Winnipeg does take a couple of weeks to get that benchmark price out. When it changes, I will adjust the chart to reflect that. Houses under $450,000 continue to be a hot point in Winnipeg. We're hearing 10 plus offers are very consistent in that price point. And I've been told as the weather's warmed up, it seems like everybody in Winnipeg came out of hibernation. The real estate market has really picked up a lot of activity and maybe if they're coming out of hibernation, they'll realize the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are still a terrible football team. But what does the Ball Prairie Real Estate Biometer say about the Winnipeg real estate market? Well, if you're thinking about buying a house this year, it's time to get moving. Okay, did you skip to this section and miss all the other good stuff? It's okay, don't lie to me, but help me out. Give me a like, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more of these awesome updates. Let's talk about the Toronto real estate market where they saw a monster months for sales and it wasn't just single family homes. The condo market is starting to see a resurgence. We're gonna talk about that in one second, but total sales just under 11,000. That's up 51% from last year. It's up 41% from last month. And the fact that nearly 11,000 houses sold in the GTA means that February 2021 saw more houses sell than the five year average for any month of the year. That's a monster year. Of course, there have been individual months where they've had more sales. Five year average though, not a single month, there's over 11,000 in Toronto. How about new listings? 15,000 new listings came on the market. That's up 43% from last year. It's up 47% from the month before. The five year average for new listings a month is only about 10,000. What about active listings? That's an important metric to look at. 8,700 active listings right now in Toronto. That is up four, sorry, down 44% from last year. It is up 16% from last month. The five-year average is just over 12,000 active listings. So they're definitely low in inventory. What does that put their months of inventory at? Well, it's 0.8 right now, which of course puts Toronto in the extreme seller's market category. The composite benchmark price, so composite includes all property types, townhouses, single family homes, apartment style condos all together. That is up 15% from last year. It's up 4.7% from last month. It's $969,000 right now. Toronto's gonna to cross that million dollar barrier very quickly, joining Vancouver in the million dollar club in Canada. Looking at the price trend, we can see this is where Toronto starts to see prices increase as the spring and summer markets heat things up. If you look at the yearly price trend, you can see this continual acceleration of prices in Toronto for the last couple of years. And like I said, the composite price that we're looking at here, that combines all property types together. But let's talk about condos really quick. In the month of February, for every condo that was listed, another one was sold. We're starting to see the condo market see a resurgence. We're seeing the investor market come back. They must've been listening to me when I said last month and the month before and the month before that, that this was a window to get these good deals because now we're gonna start to see prices trend up if this amount of sales continues. So what does the Bald Prairie Real Estate Biometer say for the Toronto real estate market? Well, if you're thinking about buying a house this year, I'd be getting moving right now. Ottawa is one of those silly cities. They're so low in inventory right now that we're seeing prices increase like crazy and bidding wars on basically everything. There are almost 1,400 houses sold in the month. That's up 22% from last year. It's up 36% from last month. The five-year average is just over a thousand houses sold. If they had more inventory, they would have sold a lot more than that. They had 1,100 new listings come on the market. That's down almost 20% from last year. It is up 1.7% from the month before. The five-year average new listings is 1,600. How about active listings? This stat continues to blow me away. 
984 active listings to start the month in Ottawa. That is down 50% from last year. It did come up 3% from last month, but their five-year average for active listings is over 4,600 in the month. So there's only 25% of the normal active listings. That's what's driving up prices in Ottawa right now. Their months of inventory is 0.7. That is of course in the extreme seller's market, second only to Halifax right now. Their composite benchmark price, $565,000. That's up 22% from last year. It's up 1.7% from last month. Now, Ottawa does take a couple of weeks to produce their benchmark price. So I do a rough calculation on it. And if it is different than my calculation, I will adjust the charts and the information accordingly. What does the ball prairie real estate biometer say for the Ottawa real estate market? Well, the continued extreme low supply and strong demand, it's gonna keep pushing prices up. So if you're looking at buying a house this year in Ottawa, I'd be getting moving right now. Whoa, 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 hold the phones because sales in Montreal actually decreased. Is this a sign that Montreal real estate market showing some signs of weakness? I don't think so. This is gonna be probably looked back on as a blip on the radar because they don't have a lot of inventory. If they had more inventory, they would probably sell more houses. Sales though, 5,100 sales in the month. That is down 3.5% from last year, but it is up 25% from last month. The five-year average is about 4,000 sales in the month. Active, sorry, new listings coming on the market. 6,200 new listings came on the market. That is down 6% from last year. It is up 1.5% from the month before. The five-year average of new listings in the month, 7,500. Active listings, they have over 11,000 active listings right now, but that's down 19% from last year. It is up 1.5% from last month. The five-year average though for active listings in Montreal this time of year, 25,000. So months of inventory is at 2.2. That of course is in a seller's market in Montreal. Let's talk about the composite benchmark price, $445,000. That's up 17% from last year. It's up 2.6% from last month. Now I do a rough calculation on the Montreal benchmark price because it takes Montreal a couple of weeks to put out that benchmark price. So if that number does change, I will adjust the charts and the information going forward. Well, what are we talking about for the Bald Prairie Real Estate Biometer though? Well, when you've got 50% fewer listings on the market, that's gonna drive prices up. And so I've got the Bald Prairie Real Estate Biometer at Get Moving if you're thinking about buying a house this year in Montreal. The Halifax real estate market is so hot right now that their months of inventory is only a couple of weeks. Let's talk about sales though. 481 houses were sold in the month in Halifax. That is up 19.4% from last year. It's down 13% from the month before. 639 new listings came on the market. That is down 7% from last year. It is up 24% from the month before. They currently have 331 active listings. That's down 71% from the year before, down 88% from the month before. Months of inventory, 0.7. So a couple of weeks is all they have in Halifax right now. That's obviously squarely in the seller's market category. Their average price is just under $400,000. That's up almost 18% from last year. It's up 8% from the month before. Halifax has got one of the tightest inventory situations in Canada. Ottawa as well is in that same category. That's why the Bull Prairie Real Estate Biometer for Halifax says, if you're thinking about buying a house this year, it's time to get moving. How long can this crazy hot real estate market continue in Canada? Especially because it's not really linked to any sort of economic fundamentals or massive population growth. Although I think that's going to have a much bigger role later on this year and for the next couple of years. But the economics right now don't support these crazy price increases. And I think they continue as long as government policy continues to favor asset appreciation and the devaluation of the Canadian currency right now, because that's what is actually going on here more than anything else, is that the dollars with more inflation is starting to run pretty hot, and the government seems pretty hell-bent on continuing that in order to pay down these massive debts that they have racked up. So until that changes, I don't think you're going to see anything changing for house prices. People are putting money in assets like real estate in order to protect their finances from inflation. 
Interest rates, is that gonna have an impact? Well, right now we've only seen about a quarter point bump at the most. And no, that is not going to make a dent whatsoever in this hot real estate market. If interest rates go up one, two, three percent, that will slow things down. But the government doesn't seem like they want to go there right now. We've seen fixed rates go up just a little bit, but that's tied to the bond market. Variable rates haven't changed at all. That's fixed to the Bank of Canada overnight rate. So until you start seeing economic policies from the government that are going to either stop devaluing the currency or they do interest rate hikes or there's policies put in place to slow down demand, this is going to continue and it's going to continue to accelerate. Are you thinking about buying a house this year? Well, if you are and you would like to be put in touch with a fantastic realtor in your area, one that helped me put together these market updates, reach out to me. I'll put my contact information below. I will be happy to put you in touch with a fantastic realtor that's going to know your market inside and out. If you're a first time home buyer, you probably got first time home buyer questions. Don't worry, I got you covered right here is a first time home buyer play that's gonna answer all of those questions. And this right here is what the YouTube algorithm says you want to see next. So click on that for me, give me a like, hit the subscribe button. As always, thanks for watching guys.